This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. How are you? It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble, and the Ramble goes on until uh, uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. However, uh, wherever you happen to be, uh, just adjust for that time, and you can tell whether the show is live or not. And if it's not live, it's a recording, and that's fun, too, and you can listen to that. And in about 25 minutes from right now, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk with our citizens panel. That's a format in which, you know, we don't just talk to one person. Okay, a lot of people talk with each other, but you'll you'll see what that's all about if you've never seen it before. In the meantime, though, as we do uh, uh, once a week, we check in with a dear friend of ours and we always surprise him by calling him first You say. Okay, it's time to make a call. And we always do it this way because you never know what's going to happen when you call our friend Stephen Pearl. Here we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you touch my grandmother there again, I'll fucking kill you. I don't care if she can't feel it. She's old. I'll fucking rip your gun. I'll play handball with it. I'll take your fucking screen out and I'll sponge my car with it. I'll take your fucking intestines out. I'll play jump up with it. Oh, wait. Is this Orchard 4729? Oh, never mind. Hello. Hello. What's up? I thought I'd give you a little uh, big big opening there. <laughs> Come out of the gate kicking and screaming and biting. I should know better than to not start the recording before I call you. You know. There you I, go. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> ne- never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Hi, how you yeah, doing? You never know. The sensor's going, whoa, well, better not say that word again, Mr. Benny. How you doing, Steven? Good, still alive and well. Every day above ground is a good day. How are you, my friend? This is Stephen Pearl, who uh, for years was on my radio show in San Francisco. I don't know how many times you did it. It had to be. Uh, 756. I don't know. That's just a wild guess. A lot. I mean, it was fun. A lot. I mean, you were one of the guys who, who could just walk in. And I wouldn't, you know. Yeah, he let me. He, I'm one of the few guys who had, I could just come in if I had nothing to plug, which was a lot. <laughs> I could just come in and hang out, which I did often. Well, you know something? I always, do, you, do you remember in the early days of television when they would have guests on a show and the guest would never have anything to plug? He was just there because he, he was booked for the show, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, you watch, I watch old uh, Dick Cavett shows and the guy's not there to plug anything. You know, he just know, he, yeah. he just wants to talk to Dick Cavett. So, wow, hey, hey, I just flew into town with Dolores, Dick. I just got nothing going on, boy. But it's wow, good to see you. Like. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you you remember? By the way, you do remember the the whole Bob Hope situation with me? The, the, the no, Bob, I don't. I never heard about the, it. The, 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 the Bob Hope. Hope promo. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I got to find it here. Oh, tell Hold me on. this. Hold on a second. I'm, t- I'm trying to find it here because I've got it. I've, I've always got it ready to go in case I ever need it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Bob Hope, Bob Hope, Bob Hope, Bob Hope. Don't tell me it's not here anymore. It's got to be here. Oh, see, see. Now you have me all worked here, up and now there's no Bob go. Hope. Okay. Just, just be quiet for a couple, about uh, 34 seconds. That's all it takes. I'll try. All right? Yep. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute! Now it's not. It's not playing. Oh, that's fine. Oh, I see why. Because I don't have that up. Okay, here we go. Listen to this. He wants you to say, "This is Bob Modern Rock Hope." What is it? He wants you to do a station promo. What is it? This is Bob Modern Rock Hope. This and you're is, listening to Alex. This Bennett. is Bob Modern Rock Hope, and you're listening to Alex Bennett on Rock Alex 101. Bennett. On live <laughs> 105. 105. Yeah, one more. This is Bob Modern Rock Hope. You're listening to Alex Bennett live 105. Alex. <laughs> hey, what's the name? Ad- Addict Cypress Attucks? Hey, I don't know, boys. Well, I knew him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I don't know. Why. <laughs> he tried. He tried. It cuts off early now. I have no idea why. But anyway. 
That's great. A, that's I it. have a Bob Hope story. I have an interesting Bob Hope story. Yeah. That uh, he went to in nineteen ninety in October of nineteen ninety four. He was appearing at Tower Records in L.A. He made a little appearance, signing autographs. He had some uh, video to plug. Bob Hope remembers World War II, all the big fun. And uh, I went with some friends from the comedy store. And everybody brought some from the sign and everything. And I brought a Jimi Hendrix album. Because I figured there were, there was, nowhere in the world was there a Jimi Hendrix album with Bob Hope's autograph on it. So I brought my copy of Are You Experienced? And we're waiting in line. Everybody's meeting Bob Hope. And he's like, God, you could see a skull through his head by this point. He was really old. And he was fairly deaf. And his daughter or stepdaughter or whoever she was was there. And, like, you know, people say, hey, Bob, there's a lobby. I got to say it. And she said, his daughter was there. Said, Dad, he said it's great to meet you. So my turn comes. And I hand, the, hand him the Jimi Hendrix album. And I go, Mr. Hope, who do you think was a better guitarist, Jimi Hendrix or Dwayne Allman? And he kind of looks at me. He kind of stares at me. And his daughter goes, Dad, he said, who is better, Hendrix or Allman? He goes, hey, that's wild. Me too. And he signs Bob Hope right under <laughs> Jimi Hendrix and Prince. And I move. So I have probably the only copy in the world of where you experience with Bob Hope's autograph on it. So that was my big, and I had a picture taken with him while he was doing it. So funny, there you go. It's funny. I did something like that once, too, with somebody who was a guest on the show. And I brought in an album that had nothing to do with him. <laughs> And asked him to sign it, and I can't remember what it was because I I guess I still don't have the album any longer, you know. Oh, we gotta save that stuff. I was I would have been floored if Bob Hope said, "Hey, Hendrix can really wow, but Dwayne Allen was magic on that slide, boy." Hey, it's wow. <laughs> he just said, "Hey, me too." You know where? Good enough. You know where I went wrong, and I one day said to myself, "God, did I fuck up?" I had all these guests on my show, okay some of the biggest people in the music industry would drop by, right? Sure. You would think that being the smart guy that I am, I would have brought a copy of the album of that person who was the guest on the show so they could autograph it. Certainly. And then I would have a record collection worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Oh, sure. Especially the dead guys, and there's lots of them. Yeah. So, Sure. but I never did. I never did. Oh, oh and, and, you fool. And, you yeah, fool. Oh. The, the other one was uh, movies. Like I had directors on like Robert Wise and people like that. Uh -huh. never, never had them sign a thing. I guess maybe I was too embarrassed to ask for an autograph. I mean, sometimes uh -huh. sometimes people would bring a book with them and they'd say, uh, here, let me autograph it for you. You know, and yeah. I, I, that, sure. that was fine. But I would never throw yeah, the book but... at them and say, would you autograph it for me? Uh huh. Yeah. See, I I would be that annoying fan. Hi, could you sign this? Would you sign my wall? Would you autograph my pizza? Would you do this? Well, who was so, who was uh, the guy that did the who was the guy that did all the artwork for? Uh, oh, what's his name? It, my you know, fear and loathing. Um, oh, uh, uh, Ralph Stedman. Ralph Stedman. Uh, yeah. I he actually I have a book signed by Ralph Stedman, and he not only signed it, he did a little artwork in there with the splat. Oh, actually, that's yeah. what, see, when you get a, an artist to autograph something for you, they usually put a little doodle on there. I'm, and I'm no artist, but I do that, too. So yeah, but, uh, but, that's nothing wrong with that. But he, you know the splat I'm talking about because he would use a splat in some of his artwork, you know. Uh -huh. like uh, a, yeah. An, an ink splat. Boom. And so yeah. he signed True. his name, yep. and then he did, I did something, and then splat. And I can't, I, but I don't, know where, <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's probably in storage somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that's why I always said I, Al Hirschfield's drawings are like a ballet and uh, Stedman's drawings are like a hockey game with a lot of fighting <laughs> in it. You're right. Most people don't know when we yeah. say Hirschfeld who Hirschfeld is. No, well, they look it up. Google it, kids. Learn something. These are amazing people. Hirschfeld was amazing. Uh, this is a guy who... He was my favorite cartoonist ever. His, his uh, uh, specialty was Broadway. Uh, and also he would do movies too, and he would do stars and so on. But basically, he did Broadway shows, and uh, the artwork was just amazing. And you would have to find in each one where he'd put the name of his daughter, which was Nina, uh -huh. and you could find it. Nina, like, that's right. Like in, you have a little number near his signature of how many and, Ninas were there, and you had to look for them. Exactly. 
You, and, 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 and I, when I was a kid, we get the New York Times on Sunday, and I go right to the art section, <laughs> and I look for the Hirschfield story and try to find the Ninas. That's just, that'll set them up for the day. Find the Ninas, son. You, okay, Dad. <laughs> and usually you could find maybe three quarters of them. The rest of them were yeah. like just really amazing where he would put them, you know. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Incredible artwork. The, the one of the best, no, probably I, the best, my favorite anyway. But. I was told I may be wrong, so please don't sue me if I'm wrong, okay? But that at some point he had a falling out with Nina, but he still used her name in the paintings. You know. Oh, really? Paintings. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't speak to her, there's no Nina he wasn't speaking to her. Yeah. So, like, he, did, he did keep the name in, so. But he was uh, he was a great artist. People, if you don't if you don't know who he is, just look up uh, what was it, uh, Al Hirschfeld. Was it Al? Al Hirschfeld. Yeah, yeah. He made it to like a hundred and one, and even even his like when he was a hundred, he was still driving around New York and going to shows and drawing pictures. Amazing guy. Yeah. So uh, just look up Al Hirschfeld and just look at his stuff. It is just yep. absolutely yeah without yeah. peer. It's funny without peer. Yeah. And humorous too. The best. Yeah. Very humorous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Incredible work. Incredible work. All I can say is, wow. Any other artists you want to turn us on to? Oh, well, as cartoonists, I love Stedman, as I said, Art Crumb, of course. You got to know who Art Crumb is. And uh, kids, go back to the old Mad Magazine and check out old Don Martin. Nobody likes Don Phone Bone Martin. Good sound effects, too. Sack, Sabadak, Wump. Good, <laughs> good, good, uh, good storylines. Wow. And that's it. That's it for now. Next week we'll have another uh, John. Next week we'll study John Nagy, folks. J- John Nagy. Wait a minute. Hold, learn, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I know learn, the name. Learn how to draw with John Nagy. Today we'll oh, learn how oh, to draw, oh, oh, yeah. draw he, a cone. He, yeah. Here's a cone. Next week a burn bow. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. John Nagy, if I remember correctly, was the guy who taught art on television, right? That's right. Yep, the guy with the checkered shirt and the goatee. looked like a beatnik in the 50s. And he would sit there and he'd just you'd watch him paint. It was really yeah, the slowest yeah. show like in the history. Like, it, well, it was the slowest show in the history of television. Yeah. <laughs> Except now they have a thing. I saw they have a thing. I think it's in uh, maybe it's in Sweden or someplace like that. That's called slow TV. Have you heard about this? No. What's that? It's slow TV. It, <laughs> it things move like words. Uh, well, uh, we're taking we're taking a boat ride up the Danube. And then they just put a camera on the front of the boat and run it for like 12 hours. Oh God, all the boredom of traveling while staying in your very own living room. The ratings are through the roof on it. Oh, man, people want to go on long trips where nothing happens. And, and they don't try to do the same thing twice. Sometimes it's like we'll watch a guy uh, making something or another that just takes hours. Uh. But you, they just have a shot of him making it. <laughs> And they call it slow TV. One camera shot. Yeah, it's it's a sensation. It's a sensation. Oh my god! Which reminds me slow then TV. of Andy Warhol, who uh-huh. who did, for instance, a, f- a couple of films. One was called Sleep, and I I uh-huh. had the privilege of seeing Sleep. They said Andy Warhol's uh-huh. Sleep at this theater next week, right next Saturday night, and Sleep <laughs> was literally. A guy sleeping. <laughs> An eight-hour film. He ran eight hours of film through a camera. I guess he had two cameras or something, so he could cut back and forth while he changed the reel and the other. Eight hours of a guy <laughs> sleeping, and it went oh on. It, it went on, and uh, people started walking out. <laughs> <laughs> after how about, dare they? You after, don't know how it ends. Yes, he wakes up. <laughs> after about the first hour, because nothing's happening. The guy's sleeping. Maybe he would. No, he's, he's sleeping. The excitement might be maybe somewhere in the film where he turns over, rolls over. Right? <laughs> <in the sleep. laughs> it doesn't even talk in his sleep. It's, just, and it's this, a silent this film. This went on for eight hours. Now, I did not stay through the whole thing. But there I was there was one guy who stayed through the whole thing. <laughs> I was playing a guy in the film. And and we had to say, it was one guy got up and left, and just before he left, he turned around, looked at the screen, and said, wake the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he should have done it in Tuesday, like sleep and then part two. Four so, hours and another four-hour film. Sleep, part two. There's always room for a sequel. 
So these people in uh, Sweden who think they've invented something new ain't got nothing on uh, on Andy Warhol who was doing it years ago. Yep, Andy did it first, so there. Yeah. And I'd like to think what I'm doing is slow radio. Uh, you know, just, slow radio. Just Keep ri- listening. Maybe something will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Keep it as slow as possible. Yes, we took out all the action and interesting parts. No yeah. radio. Yeah, but just static and Armstrong and Getty occasionally. That's the slowest radio there is. Well, you followed art to a certain extent, haven't you? A little bit, yeah. More, more when I was younger. You know, when I went to art school and everything. Now, then it was comedy and uh, and dope. <laughs> well, who were some of your favorite artists? I mean. Oh, well, uh, I'm no expert, but I really like Rembrandt. Uh, he was a, he put like a splotch of paint down and make it look like a real detail from a photograph. Uh, Rembrandt, of course, Da Vinci, the great ones. I love Dolly, Salvador Dolly, Van Gogh, that crazy ditzy. Now, Dolly, Dutchman, Dolly, I got, I got to argue with a little bit about Dolly. Because um, Dolly was, how can I put it? Um, I often felt he was like a... Uh, 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 a, a window dresser, you know, uh-huh. a, a guy who does windows <laughs> in, 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 in department stores because his stuff was, I don't know. I never, I always tried to figure out whether he was either putting us on or he really was truly an artist, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe that's yeah. why he was truly an artist is because you couldn't figure that definition out, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, well, he could paint. Uh, let's see. Should I do the melted clock or the floating Jesus? What would it strike? Yeah. Now, do you, I I knew a guy in San Francisco. His name was Ronnie Sunshine, and he had uh-huh. he had a limo service. Actually, he had a be- beat up limo, and he would uh-huh. actually take very famous people. They would always want running Ronnie Sunshine to be their, yeah. you know, their their uh, limousine driver, and he had this uh-huh. limousine. And once he got Dolly in there, and he asked him to uh-huh. do something, and Dolly did it. He signed Dolly. On the whole back seat of his car. Oh wow! <laughs> Never watched that seat again. It, it was a fabric seat, so that you know. But he did the dolly signature, huge, wow. across the back of the of the limo. Very cool. Yeah. So um, very cool. He's and then I sell that limo for millions of dollars. Uh, and just as a side note, I knew a woman once. This is absolutely true. Uh, I, when I was shooting Midnight Blue, we'd shoot a lot of women who, you know, were nude. And in those days, nobody had tattoos. I mean, today it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can't see the person for the tattoos, you know. Uh, Everybody's got tattoos and I, now, and by, yeah. the, by the way, I don't know about you, but tattoos make me vomit. But anyway, um, she had a tattoo above her pubic line of Picasso's <laughs> signature. And she said, I have the only pussy signed by Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. <laughs> But it, was, <laughs> but it was, you know, you know the pussy was sideways and had like an eye on it. But yeah, you know the Picasso signature. You know, it's very, yeah, very well yeah, known. Yeah, sure. So, you know, but uh, now Picasso, there were there. That was inter- He was interesting. You know, yeah, grab him by the Picasso. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, he was he was pretty pretty interesting. Oh, well, I love I love his work too. Oh, he's fantastic. You know, um, way way beyond anything I could uh, I could accomplish. Well, I mean, he started out more traditional, and then he started getting into yep. this abstract stuff, you know. With yeah, people. and somebody put mushrooms in his sandwich, and, <laughs> and the eyes are on the same side of the face. But I, I, for, I, I actually love Picasso's work. I just, you know. Oh, he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But I'll tell you who my favorite it just, of all. It, my favorite of all time. See, this is getting to be an intellectual program today, folks. We're talking if you say about, Peter Max, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> oh Jesus! Somebody, I was hoping Peter Max would die in a flaming automobile accident. You know, no, um, then they'd be talking about him even more. <laughs> I remember the year. Oh, he had so much more. I remember to do. the year he did the artwork for the front of the New York phone book. Uh, <laughs> I remember his work. It was so hammy in the '60s and stuff. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, where was I? Oh, so um, um, now I'm trying to remember what. What, what I was trying to say. Yeah. Talk about uh, yeah, Picasso and other stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, geez. Uh, who was the other guy? Well, I'll tell you one. An artist I did know interviewed him and his wife was Walter Keene. 
You know, was the, that the pogo guy? No, the guy with the big eyes, the big eye kids. Oh, the big eyes, yeah, the big eyes. One of the kids with all those big eyes, yeah, sure. They just made a movie about he and and Margaret uh, called. Yeah, I think it was called. I think it was called. I think it was called Big Eyes. Uh, big Eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else are you gonna call? It? And it was really, it was. Uh, uh, I, I I remember going to their place. They lived in the marina of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I went to their place, and there was stuff on the floor. And he was painting that night. What would happen is, one night he would paint. He would draw the 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 basis for the painting, right? And uh, she would do yep. it. She would actually do it. And then the yeah. next night they'd reverse roles. And there was always a difference between uh, Margaret's like paintings and his paintings. She had. Uh, I think she was the better of the two. But right. they came up with this gimmick of the big eyes. And, um, it, you know, it, 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 they were sensational. They sold like crazy. Oh, sure. I and, remember they were huge. They were all over the place. And I said to him, I said, now, wait a minute. You know, these things are selling pretty fast. What do you do to slow them down? He says, <laughs> I was in real estate. I know what to do. I said, what? He says, you raise the price. Then they go slower. <laughs> so you find that level yeah. at which you can paint fast enough, but the price is high enough that they don't sell as fast. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant move. And that's why there were so many Keens around. They did about one a night. That that was how how productive wow. they were. That's how artful they Jeez. were. And actually, yeah, I, 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 that's like Bob Ross, right? What what he gave me were a bunch of a, a, a bunch of keen lithographs, which I had for years, and I uh-huh. don't know. Then I lost them somewhere, or I threw them out, or something, and I shouldn't have because mm. today they'd probably be worth a fortune because just because of their kitsch wow. their kitsch value, you know. Yeah, uh, it's but those big eyes looking at you all the time. But their stuff wasn't wasn't terrible. What got to be terrible no. were all the imitators. Like you go into Woolworths, and some guy had done. <laughs> big eye kids or big eye cats, yeah. or big eye dogs, yeah, know. big eye Hitlers. I don't know, you know. <laughs> big eye Hitler. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we look kinder with the big eyes. Yeah, but I mean, so it was really, uh, it was really quite, uh, quite uh, uh, fascinating uh, how these people uh-huh. wow. did their art. But their stuff wasn't bad. It, it it just be- it no it just, it yeah. no it just became so popular that everybody derided it. But uh, yeah. the, the big eyes, you know, here's what you do for most people don't know art from Shinola, right? So you come up with a gimmick in your pictures so that person thinks they're an art expert. Oh, that's a king. Yeah. You know, so the big <laughs> eyes were the, yeah. so you had the big eyes and they go that's a king. And that's and that's how they became so popular. But they were they were incredibly wow. successful. And if you ever get a chance, this movie was out what two years ago, something like that. Uh-huh. They had that German actor uh, who's in all the Tarantino films uh, play uh, Walter Keane, and it's all about how he really ripped Margaret off. You know, she she wow. she got really pretty ripped off by him. But you know, it's a good. It, it's that's that's an interesting story. And then the other thing I have, I like the I have it here hanging in my house, is I have a print. Uh, there was a, a come, remember a club called Deviate in in San Francisco. Nah, I know what that is. Yeah, there was a, it was a nah, music club, right? And uh, the oh, guy, they wouldn't have me. The guy who knew uh, who owned the place knew uh, Keith Herring, so Keith Herring did a poster for the place. And Keith Herring uh, came on my show, and it's the one time I asked somebody to autograph something for me. And I have an autographed Keith Herring here, which I'm sure is worth something, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, art, I, I, I see. That's what amazes me about you. You are versed on so many things that sometimes it amazes <laughs> me. I wouldn't think that I today I would be having a discussion with Stephen Pearl about art. 
Well, I, I draw a little bit, but what I don't know about art could feel like a football field. So <laughs> I'm no expert on art. I know more about music, which I don't play too well, but I know a lot about than art. But uh, I got my own opinions, and most of them are wrong, and I'm proud of that. And most of them are wrong. <laughs> most of my opinions, yeah, but I stick by them, God damn it. They may be wrong, but they're loud, and that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. But um, um, I guess, oh, I, the one thing I was going to say, I now remember what it was is to me my favorite artist of all time is Van Gogh. Uh, you know, there's Oh, just, Van Gogh is amazing. Uh, and oh, and at the Musée d'Orsay in uh, in Paris, there is a whole room of Van Goghs just in a circle, oh in a circle. You just go from one Van Gogh to another and and they they allow you to really walk right up to them. You can put your nose on them. Uh, uh, wow. and and see these things in detail. And to me, that was just the most uh, wonderful thing in the world is to go to the Musée d'Orsay and see that all these Van Goghs, they're incredible. Wow. I've never seen a single one in person. And, and oddly course, enough, the prince and he's incredible. It, in, and then we got to get going here. But in the, at the Musée d'Orsay, they do have one painting that you think is iconoclastically American, and it is. But they have it. And that's the Whistler's Mother. No, oh, Whistler's mother. Yeah, and it's a it's huge. I mean, it's not a small painting. It's gigantic. Oh, really? It's a big painting. I thought it was a little thing on the wall. Gigantic. Well, it's always a little thing on Jeez. the wall when you buy them at Costco, you know. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, we want to do this again next week. I'm with you, Daddy. Let's do it. If you said no, I'd tell you to go fuck yourself. We'll uh, we'll talk to well, you next week. Go fuck yourself anyway, but Nick will be back with Art and You next week. Don't miss it. Next week, Impressionism. The amazing Stephen Pearl. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. And everybody, here we are. Wait a minute, let me... <laughs> One second. Let me get my picture up. Let's do it again. Yeah. Okay. If people are watching this on Facebook, you know what I what I just did. How I screwed up. Anyway, hi. How are you? Welcome back. Uh, thanks to Stephen Pearl. He'll be with us again next week. We love him dearly. And uh, it's time now for us to uh, get into the meat of the program. A lot of people don't listen to the first half hour, and I think if you don't listen to the first half hour, uh, fuck you. It is many times uh, the most singularly important part of the program, okay, because I think it's very interesting. But the reason I've been doing interviews and not doing my monologues uh, is because I just, you know, I just didn't want to... um, um, uh, waste that half hour on me saying things you know because i find that nobody listens to the first half hour they don't listen in great numbers um so um that's the reason why we have one of the reasons we have a guest but it's also the other reason why you should listen because these are some of the funniest people i know and we're very fortunate to have them calling us well listen anyway uh it's time now to go to the citizens panel it's time now to wait for some people to start calling the program and uh, joining us. Uh, I think it's going to be a feel-free night tonight, so feel free or feel free to call. Uh, and our our uh, we our Skype uh, handle is Gabnet Live. If you have Skype, if you don't have Skype and you just want to be, let me look at the. I have always have to look at the number, and I want to. And you want to find out what's. Uh, uh, Hold on a second. And you want to just call us using the phone, which is the easiest way. Uh, wait, wh- why is all of that sudden that on? I push. In, in, no, forget it. I just, I, I give up. I'm uh, tonight. I'm just going to forget about even doing a show at this rate. Uh, see, uh, I accidentally put up the, the the screen first because I my hand accidentally hit the button that I use on the keyboard as a shortcut. To turn it over, see that you know, like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want to call us, let me go get the number here because I always have to look for it because I'm dyslexic and can't remember numbers. Uh, it's three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine three four seven three five two zero zero seven nine. If you want any of this information 
all you need do, my friends, is go over to um, uh, gabnet.net and all the information you will need to know oh, is there. I'm having all kinds of troubles tonight. Jeez. I, I, I'm losing it. Uh, well, here, we can talk to somebody who, who isn't losing it, okay? Uh, hi there. Uh, and, and, and it's the first person on our citizen panel tonight, Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. How do you do? Oh, and we just lost your camera. There it is again now. Yeah. Okay. I, and since you're the first. I'm, I'm taking my, my risk of being the first one. Yeah, because it's always the first person <laughs> calling is the one who has the most trouble I know. with it. No, I'm just, I have the jitters tonight or something. I'm just hitting the wrong buttons and things like that. But people listening to the audio don't know the difference because they're not watching the video. But I try and make it a good video presentation, you know. We it has to, been uh, one crazy day for me, I've got to tell you. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a second. Let me just say to the okay. people who were watching last night and you had trouble with it going on and off and on and off, you know, you'd, you'd be watching it and all of a sudden it would stop playing. It doesn't seem to be a problem tonight. It seemed to have been something with the just that particular feed that we were doing last night. So feel free to watch it. And there's no fill tonight, as I said. So if you've never wanted to call before, now's the time to do it because you want to have somebody uh, of Phil's nature involved in the show tonight. Not that I, not that I don't like it. Anyway, uh, here comes uh, here comes Rob Alfano. And let's see if we still have Jeff. Jeff is spinning. Uh, hello, Rob. Hello. Uh, turn on your camera. Okay, now we don't have Jeff. We just have Jeff's picture. Now he's spinning around. And Rob, we haven't yet to see your picture. I was waiting for Jeff to bring his picture back on, thinking that if I didn't turn mine on, maybe he'd be able to turn well, his back he's on. He's just whirling around now. He's just whirling around now. Oh, I see him. Oh, you see him? I don't see him. Yeah. Boy, you, you're really red. Did you get in the sun today? Turn your, I sure did. Turn, turn yourself on, uh, Rob. I mean, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> I think he knows how to do this. Yeah, I, I, I you know. Uh, okay, there's Rob. Now I can't see Jeff. <laughs> now, maybe you can see him, Rob. Mm -hmm, but do. that doesn't matter because I'm doing this is the feed that people are getting. So I can see me. <laughs> uh, uh, well, hold on, hold on a second, Jeff. John? Turn your camera on, John Rock. I know. Well, I got to do that off and on thing here. Yeah, it's, it's, right. And, hey, there we and go. Jeff is still whirling around. You see? Always a he first looks good, all right. He's not whirling in my picture. I know, but he is in mine, and that's oh, all no, that I, matters I because mine's the one that goes out on the Internet. It's right. the first guy poison. It's the first guy poison. So hang yes. up and call right back, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh boy! And he had something. What, then it will be Rob that has the problem because he was no, the second guy. No, no, it's always the first guy. Yeah, that well, has a problem. And what happens? Is, what that. happens is is that uh, uh, the first guy calls and he comes on and you see him and he looks good, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then all of a sudden, pow, you know, he yep. things like that happen. You there, Jeff? No, he's not there. Yeah. No. Okay. I think he's, gonna, he's sort of black, sort of grayed out. He's here. grayed out. Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can get rid of him actually. Remove from group. Okay, <laughs> sounds now, awful uh, when you say it that way. Yeah, I removed him I'm from going the to group. Get rid he, of him. He shall be banished from the group. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Vladimir Putin will take him out. And I would call Jeff back, but then that would cause us, uh, another problem. His his uh, it, it's it, he's in red right now. Maybe I still see him. Do you I still don't. see his picture? I still see the faded Jeff Stein. Oh, well, I got rid of him here. <laughs> but uh, no, but he, uh, over on the side, you know, where you see each of the people and there's a green or there's a red. Yep. It's red. Well, here comes Jeff. Let's see what happens. Hello. Hello, Jeff. Are you there? See, he's not there. Mm. Now he's gone. Now I don't see him anymore. Yeah, well, now I now have him grayed out. <laughs> the grade, the grayed out, Jeff. Wait a minute, hey. wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, there oh, he goes. Hello, Jeff, you there? I think I am, Okay, I don't still see my picture. picture. No, but turn on your camera. <laughs> turn <laughs> Can you turn it on? There it goes. There now it goes. it's going around. Oh, we should, there you go. Hey. You know something? <laughs> Fuck you, Skype. Fuck you. <laughs> 
fuck you and your fucking fuck. Hey, you're sounding like Goldstein now. At the end of our shows, you always had a fuck you for everyone. No, <laughs> you may remember the original fuck yous were mine. I was yeah. the voice at the end that went and fuck you so and so. Oh, and yeah. then when yeah. I quit doing it, he did it. And he did it. And no, then no, he, I know. You then were he the... got all the credit for it. Uh, I used to go to Manhattan yeah. a couple of times a month. Yeah. And I'd stay in a hotel. And guess what I turned on and I go, holy shit, there's a bunch of nude, crazy people talking all <laughs> at night. Yeah. We were happy I to know. do that for I you. I mean, the Jeff. hotel actually had the, uh, had the, well, yeah, they probably would have had cable uh, back then. Yeah. Before a lot of other people did, because they we, could we, afford it. We were right. in. We I were, was in a hotel, obviously. We were in oh, some hotels here in New York. That I remember. Uh, I, I can't remember how we made the deal. Hello, Renee, in Hawaii. Hello. How uh, is everyone? No, we're fine. And, Wonderful. And, and your picture oh. should pop in any second now, because lovely, lovely summer day here in New York. Ooh, Congratulations! Yes. Finally. And tomorrow, just as hot, yeah. if not hotter. And it was nineties here today in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, just just under 90 here. Renee, turn your camera off and turn it back on again. <clears throat> I think and I had 90 today. Jeff and I are the problem children. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, Jeff's not a problem child anymore. I agree. He is on my screen. He's spinning his little head off. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's spinning here now where he wasn't before. Oh, God. This oh, is... no, Jeff's back. Yay, Jeff. Can you guys see me, though? No, can't. Not yet. You're spinning. There you are. Bravo. Um, you, fuck, you see her. I don't fuck see Fuck Skype. I'm going to have a big sign that I put <laughs> I'm over I'm still not this. seeing her. Well, she, she... Well, I will. I hope to. Take it from us. She's there. Yeah. yeah, yeah why don't you... Well, where's your neon sign, Alex? Because My, you could get you could get a neon sign that haven't made this as fuck Skype. Well, well I, have the, I have the sign up here that says on air. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, but Renee, we only see about half of your face. Yeah, because she. Uh, uh, are you? I do do this on a uh, on a on a, a laptop. Yeah. So if I'm gonna stick around for Amy and Jack's show, I do it on a laptop so that I can take it outside. Yeah. Uh, if I was just gonna be for your show, I would go sit at the desk. Uh, yeah. The, but if you, if you kind of move the lid down a little bit or back a little bit or something, your head will be more centered in the picture. How about saying. down? Like I'm doing. <laughs> there, there we there. You see, like John's. Beautiful. Doing. Well, my problem is I have a backlight here. Okay. I, I, I now let's officially start the program. If anybody's hey. listening to us, the what you saw go on for the last 10 minutes goes on every night. It's called trying to get Skype to work right. Yeah, just tighten it up in editing. We'll tighten it. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll clean it up in post. I think that's the yeah. term. <laughs> right. that what they what say? do we the expect then for free? Yep. Yeah. Well, <sighs> there is a point. You have a point there. But, you know, just because you're giving something away for free, like I give this show away for free, but I still try and do the best show I possibly that's can, right? right? right. Just you're because high you, quality. If you've decided to give something away for free, don't act like it's free. Treat everybody like it's, you know. Well, the, the shittier they make the free stuff, the more you're going to want to buy the, the good stuff so that you can keep using the but, product. But Skype doesn't have a good stuff. No, they no. have a business line. They it's, have, it I, sucks. Does and you it can't suck do, too? Yeah, and you can't do this with it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so if you can't do this with a professional product. <laughs> you can, but everybody has to have the paid version. Oh. Oh, so the people who oh man, that's not smart. And how much is the paid version? Well, I don't know. Uh, I it comes with your Office 365 subscription. Yeah, I have that. But what? and uh, by the way, on Windows, there's something called uh, Skype. Um, what, what's it called? Skype something. But it's a, it's kind of a sample thing. It's a simple version of Skype. And if you want the regular Skype, you have to kind of upgrade to it if you get Windows 10. It comes with Windows 10, and it's called Skype Lite or Skype. I, I was going to say. I can't remember the term for it. I'm beginning to hate Windows 10 more yeah. and more. Huh? I'm beginning to hate Windows 10 more and more. Actually, I found it's not bad. You know, I just don't I like the that fact that I will come back to my machine during the day, and all of a sudden, it was being... Um, uh, uh, rebooted because somehow I mean I, I told them not to but somehow Microsoft wants to reboot my machine and install something oh, yeah. well yep. fuck you I don't want to install anything I don't know that you're installing in my machine 
you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, Jeff, I don't like the new airplane mode. What's the airplane mode? Every, every, every so often. Comes like, with a parachute? You know how you have an airplane mode on your iPhone? Yeah. Huh? Same thing. Oh, so you can't. All of a sudden, like, I lose everything. The, the, the machine slips into airplane mode somehow. I'm looking for a way to disable that, but you can't. When you're on an airplane, it knows you're on an airplane? No, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm working, and all of a sudden I lose connection to everything. And it's because I look down and I see the little airplane icon in the, in the, the system tray pisses me off and so it shuts off your ways. internet access and everything. yeah it shuts yeah. off everything really right. yeah oh, and, and uh and and uh i see other people bitching about it and everybody's asking the same question how do you disable airplane mode and can you call microsoft and get an answer <clears throat> no can you write <laughs> them and get an answer no you got to look at technet and uh and i've looked and I can't find it. Everybody says, oh, it's just do this. And yeah, sure. Whatever happened to customer support? Even the Indian customer support. I mean, that doesn't <laughs> even exist anymore. Next time the guy calls and says, hello, I'm from Microsoft Windows, I'm going to listen to him. It, maybe, you maybe, well, maybe, maybe you should. Now, wait a minute. Jeff, when he called up, said he had quite a day and he wanted to tell us about it. So oh, yeah. I don't what forget are, these things that? because... You know, so well. First of all, the weather was fantastic today. Yeah, and yeah. anybody that looks at me, I got a little bit of a tan today. But uh, I was working on a boat and mm-hmm. sanding mm-hmm. and putting on teak oil and all that kind of stuff. Oh, really? And it's really my wife's boat with her partner. Yeah, and they kind of have an ownership agreement, which I never quite figure out. But anyway, the other lady came in to see me just as I was leaving. Mm-hmm. And she always wants me to do shit for her, which I do what I feel like doing, not what she wants. But anyway, I just as she came in, I left. So that was mm-hmm. a good a good day. I, whatever I did, I did by myself, and I didn't have to get all the crap. But then my son uh, came up here because his... Uh, his big buddy, mm-hmm. uh, who's a musician, yeah. did a big performance in New Haven today mm-hmm. to see him play, and it was great fun. Yeah, it was cool. a terrific uh, performance. What kind of music? Uh, mostly classical. Yeah. yeah. And what does he play? Um, uh, saxophone. Yeah. Oh, good. Alto. Um, regular um, guy, little guy. Wait a minute! I'm not saying it right. It's not saxophone. It's the uh, the big long thing that slides up in front. What's that? A, tr- a trombone. <laughs> trombone. Yeah. So he played trombone. He, he's a classical trombonist. He plays for in San Francisco for their whoever that is. Yeah. And uh, he had a pianist with him. And uh, it was great. Wow. It was actually a super performance. Well, there, in, in music, there was an old joke uh, that I remember. Uh, that What's the difference between a snake going across the road and a trombone player? Okay. You try to avoid hitting the snake. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's a good idea. <laughs> that a good is slide. That's, it's not like it was an accordion that's a, player. Oh. No, wait a minute. That's a music. That's a musician's joke. I heard that yeah. from musicians. Okay. <laughs> You know, you could have picked a worse instru- a far worse instrument than a freaking trombone. That's well, not adapted. a bad instrument. <laughs> adapted for your most hated musical instrument. Well, I, I, I studied I studied trombone. I, I did, did too. Yes. I did trombone. And, I did too. I was, Six years. Yeah, <clears throat> really. I got through yeah. about one month. I was just really lazy. And anything you had to hold up, I think, kind of like, I, I was too, it was just too annoying <laughs> to me. <laughs> and uh, I do remember the only thing I liked about playing the trombone is I'd want to play it enough so I could use the spit valve. <laughs> you have to use it a lot. And I judged how much I was rehearsing and studying by how much spit, spit. came out of the spit valve. That's a good way. Yeah, yeah. And then I let's see what else, what else did I study? That was it. I studied the violin for a short time because my father was a violinist. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I couldn't stand holding that thing under my neck, you know, for days at a time. 
and so a certain laziness uh, possessed me when it came to learning an instrument. I didn't, I didn't have it. Yes, is that, how got, is that how we got keyboard players? What do you mean? Oh, because you could sit down and do it. Yeah. Well, I played the piano, a little bit of piano, and I spent a lot of time at a piano. Uh, John. Yeah, I, uh, I think it was around sixth grade. Uh, I had been taking piano lessons and not really doing all that well with them. Mm -hmm. But they, so they said, let's, have, let's think of another instrument. Mm -hmm. And for some reason or another, I decided I wanted to play the cello, yeah. which was interesting Ooh. because I had to rent, we rented a cello, and I'd have to bring it to, to, ele to my elementary school because the, the teacher was down the street from it. So I was always carrying, moving this cello around, which was not as bad as the string bass, but it was still pretty bad. But what killed me on the cello was all of the bowing. Your, your arm just fell off. You know, I mean, it was bowing. the same. It, I mean, this was sideways this way instead of that way with, with a violin. And I hated it. So my I father, switched to bass guitar. We didn't have to do very much. Just thump, 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 thump. <laughs> well, my, fa my father was a musician, and uh, he was a violinist. And um, I always respected him because I always felt that instrument was one of the hardest instruments to play, you know. Yeah. And he, in order to get somebody to be a good violinist, you got to start them young, like around 12 years old, 11 years old, even maybe younger than that. And he started when he was like in his late teens. He just picked it up and started playing it. And he was... He was a professional. I mean, he played with all the big bands in San Francisco and the San Francisco Symphony and all of that. But he was a late learner when it came to the violin. But I do remember he always had something all violinists have: a callus under the neck. <laughs> yeah, sure. He, I mean, he, the he would put he would put his uh, he would put a, a handkerchief on the yeah. on the neck thing, but uh, where you place the violin under your neck. But that didn't help much. And after years and years and years, he used to have to go down and get uh, uh, ingrown hairs removed from the callus, mm. you know. So I always admired anybody who'd play an instrument and somehow had to go through some kind of pain in order to do it. <laughs> well, you get you know? that on your, whether you play guitar and things like that. I also tried the banjo, but I was so slow. If you're doing like, you know, less like... Uh, Earl Scruggs sort of, you know, country mm -hmm. picking banjo, five finger or three fingers with five string, six string, whatever. It was all I couldn't do it. It was just, it was so slow for me. I couldn't go, you know. Yeah. And that was it. Did you, just, have a you need finger more. Yeah. Hmm? Or a five finger. I had the, I had the five string with the with the five. open string at the yeah, and then you you put like little picks on uh, three of your fingers, and and you'd play basically play. I could do it, but I was doing it so slowly. These days, I could probably play it slowly on in a computer and then speed it up electronically. <laughs> then I, then I'd That's sound I like think. I was, you know, Earl Scruggs or somebody, you know, or yeah. Steve Martin. But uh, no, I just, I still have the banjo buried in a in a closet or somewhere. It's a cheap cheap banjo. I looked. I figured maybe maybe it's worth. It. It's not a Stradivarius. <laughs> it's a bacon banjo. Uh, you know, banjos are easy to play actually. Well, you strum the, them. Well, yeah, yeah, they're, they're easy they're, to play. But they're hard to play well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> you can do dum 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 dum, and that's pretty easy. But then when you're going to do some of the plunking and the picking, the real picking, like the scrub that's style the picking, part. that's yeah. that's difficult. You know, that's not easy. Oh, here comes Brian. We add Brian to the group, and it hey, says hey. Uh, some people Hello. need to come online and update Skype before they can join this call. You're calling from your phone, aren't you, Brian? I am. You see, so he's on his way home, right? So, correct. This, yeah. So I was going to say my my son started playing violin at three years old. Yeah. Out with with the Suzuka approach. Did you Suzuki. Ever hear Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah. yeah. And that is rather than reading, because when you're three years old, you can't read very much. They would just play and, and memorize everything. Yeah. And uh, it was a good thing, and I. Um, now he's like five years old, <clears throat> and I brought in a guitar, and my wife goes, what the heck is this guitar for? And I says, look, he no longer can take a violin to school. Somebody might beat you up. <laughs> yeah. Take a guitar, you'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, right. I always, you know, I always felt sorry for, uh, there were two kids in school that I always felt sorry for. It was anybody whose parents 
gave him an accordion. Because to begin with, who likes an accordion player? Nobody. Who want, Is it a romantic instrument? I don't think you're going to play your accordion under a full moonlight, you know? Um, Never listen to tango. What? Never listen to tango music. Well, tango music, I mean, there are exceptions. There, there is some great accordion. If you listen sure. to, uh, for instance, uh, Zydeco down in uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, the use of the accordion in that is extraordinary. But that's not the way most people play accordion. The way most people play accordion is like My Myron Florin out of Lawrence Welk, you know. Right. Polka. A, a polka. Polka, yeah. Stuff from Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. Oompa, oompa. Uh, your regular yeah. Whoopi John Wilfart, who incidentally was a big polka star. Um, now you're talking like a music snob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other kid I felt sorry for was any kid who played the bass and had to drag that thing to school. Of the string bass, yeah. No, the bass, the stand-up bass. Bass guitar is no bass. problem. A well, bass guitar, but I'm t not talking about bass guitar. I'm you're talking, about talking about the double bass. The, the double yeah. bass, yeah. 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 I mean, the cello I was used to bad play enough them in bass, high yeah. school. Mm. And I would practice every day because we had them. Yeah. And during lunch, I could go and practice. I never learned how to play very well. I never performed anywhere, but it was something to do. You know, I would probably say to any parent um, that teaching your kid how to play an instrument, or at least having him try to learn how to play an instrument is just great, uh, what can I call it, yoga? You know, great, uh, it, it's a great exercise. It is. That will My follow them for the rest started. of their lives, even though they may never play again. What? You My daughter started at five playing piano. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she has not given it up, and she's taken on the saxophone. She plays alto sax. She plays baritone sax yeah and now she wants to go to the french horn really? and she's now 12. that's uh good kid. for her yeah that's yeah she's, she's really kicking butt we have to Why go to a damn but, recital every two days but <laughs> it's gotta be something you want to do i mean it don't uh don't force don't don't force it on it on, on your children no. i would imagine but for her you know she's you know she's taking it to heart good for her she is she is it's great She's made an honor band and all kinds of stuff. That's wonderful. Yeah, my yeah, older nephew it. decided to, to to play an instrument in high school, and for some reason he decided on the tuba. Talk mm -hmm. about carrying something to and from school. Yes. <laughs> His little I brother like this, uh, right? guitar, played guitar, but he, you know, so they they actually played tuba and guitar duets at at a uh, Christmas uh, 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 sh thing at their local church, and you know did did Christmas carols with tuba and guitar. It worked. I don't know how it works. <laughs> well, she did he a likes, thing. He likes sharing that thing because he likes, he likes playing it, right? Yeah, right. She did a thing what last year, and they called it uh, uh, the Christmas saxes, and there was a group of saxes that they put together, all different kinds, from the little bitty ones to the stand-on-the-floor ones. And there was 218 all together, and they ran around and did this little tour between downtown san jose and some malls and stuff like that and it sounded awesome yeah you know these people get together and at eight o'clock in the morning they don't know each other at 11 o'clock in the morning they're they've got a, a concert going it's amazing to me yeah and, and they do that i think with it helps her too. i think it helps her academically too because she's yeah. doing real good in the school and i think you know they they intertwine each other well, anyway, uh, let's uh, speak to the elephant in the room. Mm. <laughs> Which one? Which are the Republicans. They are the elephant party. Oh, Phil's uh, not here, though. And, they, uh, and it doesn't matter. Let's talk behind his back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll, let's make him wish he had called tonight. What, Jeff? Trump was in Connecticut today. Did you know I'm that? sorry. Yeah. yeah, he spoke. I know. Coast Guard. Well, oh, he oh, spoke the to Coast the Coast Guard. Guard. He went to the Coast Guard again. And he was, from what I understand, whining Yes. Yeah, Whining, was, like a little, about, like a little, 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 if you, excuse me, Renee, when I say this, like a little bitch, okay? No, no, he, he, he deserves everyone. Constantly want to leave all the lip, bitch. What yeah. a cunt he has become. 
little bitch is uh, any of us were. Uh, right? uh, any of uh, I couldn't believe he said that. It, no, but what he said, let's tell people what he said. He basically said that uh, he is being treated worse by the press and by the public than any president in history. Yeah. Yeah. Wah. Wah. I wonder why. You brought it on yourself, pal. Yeah. Stop like kitty, stop. Stop kitty, said the kitty. Listen, I would love nothing more than to be able to sit here and say, you know, he really is turning out to be a better president than I thought he would be. I yes. would love to be able to say that. And believe me, he wouldn't have to go that far because there were such lowered expectations that if he even did a couple of things right, we'd be sitting here going, eh, you know, give the guy a break. He's trying, you know, he's trying to get the job down, you know. But no, I don't. I can't even imagine him in the Oval Office. Can you? I mean, that he even feels comfortable going there and sitting down behind the desk and it's holding a meeting. Hmm? I mean, he doesn't even look comfortable when they're doing those faraway shots and he's walking through the crowd. He's putting up his thumb. He looks like he's like he's looking looks, around. He looks like, like he's a, like, like he's about five minutes away from a heart attack. Yeah, that's what I it's, always say. Huh? You, you you don't think he looks well, do you, Jeff? No, I th I always tell everybody he's going to have a heart attack before he gets uh, thrown out. Yeah. Don't blame yeah, it on that. Oh, I don't want I don't want him to get a stroke though, Jeff, because I don't want him I don't want him to forget anything he's done. And that's <laughs> yes. how he's going to resign. I mean, he's going to resign with, with uh, his uh, he's going to blame it on health. Yep. You, th you think so? And how soon do you think that's going to be? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Are we talking yeah. a week and a half or so from now? And, no. um, I, I heard an interview tonight with Tony Schwartz, who co-wrote co his book, The Art of the Deal. Yeah. Spent a year with him and said that uh, he will resign because – and he will resign and claim victory on all this. What the fuck? How the – He will. He'll, he'll twist it around and claim victory on all of yeah. this. Uh, somebody is calling from an unknown phone number. Are you there? Hello. See, he called before once. You need to tell them to turn no, uh, to close no, the window. What I need to do is to somehow block him, but uh, I can't. So, did we just lose so, somebody? So no. He's he's gonna take. He's he's gonna say he's gonna come out. Of, okay. All right. I can't even talk. How do you take credit for such a fucked up job? Just same way you take credit for having the largest crowd for an inauguration when you clearly you don't. You just do. It. You just do. And he'll claim victory in some respect and he'll get out of this. He's he's we now have the special prosecutor and he's screwed. I, I just, by the way, by the way, we just we we just lost uh, we we lost oh there John oh boy hold on hold on add to group we'll add Jeff to the group yes there we we'll add him to the group John if you're trying to call us please call make an original call to here because it it it, it really causes us a problem. Uh, I just want to know is how you can fuck up so badly at a job and take credit and want to take credit. Wait a minute. Uh, what is all that noise? Everything's bad. Uh, is that you, Brian? As far as I know, no. I hear. Yeah. I hear fate. It, 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 well, I don't know. Brian's got a bad connection. Brian, you've got a bad connection. Are you, are you going to be home God soon? You're going to. Wait a minute. Now you're okay. Now you're all right. Uh, what we need is John Rockwell to call back. And, John, what you've got to do, because I can't do it. I mean, I could do it, but I'm not going to because it then puts me in a mode I don't want to be in, uh, uh, in adding you to the group. You've got to call originally. Go, call to Gabnet. Don't call to the group you just called, okay? That's the way you do it, okay? Here he comes. There we go. Now, yeah, now you got it, John. Hi. Well, I was what? Well, I was put on. I was frozen and then put on hold. Yeah. Well, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah, what oh, happened, okay. what happened was you, when you called back, you you tried to call the group. You didn't try to call Gabnet live. No, I called what I normally call, which was. Uh, yeah. Oh really? You know, the, yeah. The today's well, yeah. I didn't. Call who knows? Gabnet. I I I give up with this. Oh hey, Scott Boddicker is calling. 
Hey, Scott. You know, for the hey. for the first time in in a, a, a long time, I can say to you, you are the last person to call tonight. Hey. <laughs> wow. Wow. I just finished watching Designated Survivor. I won't give you any spoilers, but there's a shout out to Plano, Texas on it, so you got to listen. Oh, okay. Is is this the last yeah. episode of the year? Or? I don't know. It yeah, seems I like it was. Oh, okay. it is. is it? Yeah, tonight's is the final one of the season. That's an awfully good show. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah. And you notice how they take a lot of punches at at Trump on that show. <laughs> I mean, like last week's episode was about music in schools, right? And, and and that the arts are very important to schools. I mean, you're going, is is nobody getting this? <laughs> wait, know? wait, you're talking about designated survivor? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, just stop talking about it because I'm still like five hours away. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 I see. Okay, yeah, you're. I'm, I'm like not even close to being able to see it. So just it, cut it, it out. Okay. <laughs> well, you can probably. Well, they just mentioned Plano, Texas, in it, so listen for it. Oh, okay. okay. Spoiler alert: Plano, Texas. <laughs> okay. That I can live with. Thank you. <laughs> not <laughs> just. It, it's not just old Texas. It's plain old Texas. Plain old Texas. Plain old Texas. Um, Did I hear Rob correct? Did he say that we have a uh, we now have a special prosecutor? Yes, yes we, we have do. a we have oh, yeah. we, we we have a special prosecutor. He's Robert Mueller, former head of the FBI. Uh, okay. And both sides of the aisle are thrilled. Yeah. That this guy is going to do a good and thorough job, and quite possibly will be subpoenaing his uh, tax records, his tax uh, returns. Yes! <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Christ. Because they want to see what kind of... Because his sons say that he's got... They're making all kinds of money from Russia. Now, here, here's here's what Phil would say. Can I play Phil tonight? Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. That's Bush, the part of sure. Phil. Tell you right. Nah, you? It's, uh, that, that, pro that, that private prosecutor, the special prosecutor, isn't going to come to anything. You know, it, it, it's just a, uh, something that uh, the, uh, the the left wingers in this country are doing to undermine Trump, and that he, once push comes to shove, they won't find anything on him. Thank you well, very much, Phil. You're well, full Phil, of shit. Well, Phil, that very well may be the case, and if it is the case, at least we know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we found out independent of anybody's. Right. Influence, right. let's say. Right. I, I, yep. How many here? Yep. How many here think he will last out his four years? No mm. way. Mm. I give him three hundred days. Okay. How about you, Stein? Okay. You don't think that, do you? Renee doesn't think that. Brian doesn't think that. I do. You do. You think. You think he's going to last the whole four years? I, I think he's going to get reelected. Yep. I'm on the. Uh, <laughs> oh, Scott. Oh, <laughs> That's how stupid people yeah. are. That's uh, the you know what? stupidest country in the world. They'll reelect this asshole. <laughs> well, you're right. A lot of fucking what wackos in yeah. the woodwork. Uh, Jeff has his hand up. September 23rd. That's the day he's supposed to leave. And the Why reason I'm saying that is because my wife has a little thing. She's gambling with all of her friends. And, <laughs> and I, I've got $10 in it. And September 23rd. <laughs> Is as good a thing as anything. It happens to be my birthday, so why not? Are they running so the, the yeah. wagers Ooh, on that right now in uh, Vegas? <laughs> I would just Impeachment so pool. I love it. Yeah. Let's, It'd be fun to see if they're on over there. So I'll wait, ask my I local think... bartender to put it up on the wall along with the, you know, with the Super Bowl pool. We'll have the impeachment <laughs> pool. If, if you guys <laughs> take a look, if you guys take a look, I posted um, in the chat. Um, an article written by Tony Schwartz, who wrote the book uh, "The Art of the of the Deal," mm -hmm. um, and he he was on CNN tonight, and he described Trump to a T. And it's it's fascinating to hear his take on it, but he doesn't think he's going to last. He thinks he's going to find a way to save face and get out, and. Uh, make it look like a win because that's the only way. He, he only knows winning and losing. He has no empathy. He has no. Um, he's got no heart, no feeling. This guy knows from very early on because of his father, no love. He knows that there are two. There are two things in every situation. You either win or lose, and losing isn't an option. 
And that's why he'll lie. He'll say any. I mean, you got to read this article. I, I agree with it 100 percent, man. Read, read I, the article. It's, it's where you post it. It's in the chat. Yeah. The and art I, of the deal is to never admit you're wrong. I'm, I'm going to grab it and put it in the Facebook chat. Yeah, I didn't see it there. Oh, I see it. It's in the, uh, it's in the, it's in the, the uh, Skype chat. Yeah, so what I'll, oh. I'll do is grab it right now and then move it over to the Facebook chat. Tim, uh, Tim has written in. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Trump's three world word response to Mueller isn't that special. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> now he's Dana Carvey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I don't see him in a church dress because if I did, I'd have to get him in a You'd have to what, Brian? Because you sound a little tinny and we. Gouge have... my... I, I was. Uh, I'd have to gouge my eyes out with a fucking lead pencil. Yeah, that's. Too, yeah. It's too late, Brian. If you did that, that's etched in your brain already. You'd just be blind, and that's all you'd see. So uh, a number. That's of... the last thing I'd see too. Yeah. Right. A, a number two pencil or a number three. Whichever one does the job faster. <laughs> And has more lead. <laughs> Number two, it's softer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about Rob, my patient Rob. Are you feeling better today, or how's yeah, it going? Yeah, it's just about gone. Thank you. Yeah. Just, we, in case people haven't uh, been listening, and I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, we've been doing NAD talk for the last uh, five days because Rob had a big boil on his right or left testicle oh. not on it on the saw so on the the skin on it wasn't it's not on the testicle. Oh, so it was in the in sure. the in the sack so to speak yeah yes yeah. it's on the right and it was it hurt i would imagine yeah and and uh he went he All finally access. finally he was going to go get it operated on but like uh thursday or friday he sat down and it burst this is disgusting. Uh, but a anyway, one thing led to another, and he didn't have the uh, the uh, surgery because you yeah, didn't. I got lucky. I really got lucky. They 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 turned me away. If they had not when when you me get lucky with that setting. part of your anatomy, it usually is referring to something else. No, no, no. I mean, I got lucky that they turned me away for the pre-op stuff. That's yeah. the only reason I didn't go for the surgery. Yeah. Uh, yes, Renee. You know, I I don't have any balls, and so I've been accused. Oh yes, have you do, balls. Renee. Believe but, me, but, plenty of balls. <laughs> I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the colonoscopy was far less painful than what you had. Yeah, Seriously, probably, right? it, it had right. to be way less. Doesn't painful. mean you don't have droopy drapes, though. Did you ever do? <laughs> yeah. By the way, did you ever do that substitute colonoscopy test? No, it's still sitting downstairs on the stairs. Oh, it's going to do a lot of good there. What yeah. and what do you do? Do you send your poop in the mail back to the? Uh... Yeah, the duty box. <laughs> imagine, imagine working in that receiving room. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shitty job. Yeah, I know. That was bad. That was that was the obvious line. Scott's always good a good line. Yeah. Um... <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't uh, completely understand it. You know why? Why that thing went away so easily? I guess it, it, it was just getting ready to burst, and that's why it was hurting so much. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Uh, yeah, it was ripe. This is what the first doctor said. It's ripe. not ripe yet. Yeah. Nah. Nah. As soon as it got ripe, it. Yeah. So anyway, you're okay now, and you're not. You're not gonna go do it or anything. No, I got to go Friday and uh, and get the one final follow up and. That's it. Let's make sure that sucker don't get infected because yeah. it's a. Yeah, I'm. St it's no more open. Nothing's open anymore. We've lost. Several. Yeah, it we doesn't matter. It get trapped in there, and then all of a sudden something else happens. We've lost several people as a result of talking about this. Uh, <laughs> that's because you didn't. You didn't play the medical uh, intro music. Uh, oh, there well, you go. Well, actually, we have less people listening to the audio tonight, but a f fairly good amount uh, watching the uh, the video. I'm beginning to wonder where which form people use to listen to this program now. Um, but uh, well, it could be a magnet. I mean, why are you uh, these two function semi well? So, you know, 
people yeah. are listening do you really does it matter if they're on one stream or the other yeah it hasn't been it hasn't been screwing up on me let me put it that way it's been doing pretty well, it good it shows 12 on facebook but yep. you can't see that, that what's i on can't the tell gap, when i finally right? sign off i see how many people were watching it and usually most nights it's at least 400 on gabnet yeah yeah oh wow. okay yeah it, it, that thing i don't know what that means but all i know is when i'm through it said says like you know x number of viewers and like last night when we finished it said like five four hundred viewers but i think we had a lot of viewers last night because a lot of them had to restart it up again things like that but okay. uh, you know between that and a few other things uh, you know because a Facebook Live has that number, it's fourteen now. It yeah. jumps back and but forth. Between one thing and another, we have at least ten people who listen to us, and I think that's yeah, pretty that's phenomenal. <laughs> well, you know, we have two other sick people out, though, right? We have Patrick, who's who, who's he, out, and then the the uh, legally blind guy we haven't heard from for a while. Yeah, well, I, but the thing is, with uh, uh, if two more people, by the way, could call. We would have a full house, and then we could brag about that to Patrick. Uh, <laughs> no, not Patrick, but to uh, Phil. Phil? <laughs> Patrick, uh, Patrick wrote me a description of what's wrong. And I, to tell you the truth, I can't repeat it back to you because I don't understand it completely. But it has to do with something like whenever he has this operation for the kidney stones, because he's a paraplegic, ladies and gentlemen, and he can't wait for a stone to pass because it doesn't pass. Okay, um, so they have to go in and get the stones when they appear. And uh, for some reason, and I, you know, he can explain it when he finally does call. He always has a problem with stents and things like that, or something uh, that it takes at least a week to get over with. So the catheters don't work right, and there's I don't know pee flying all over the bathroom, and I I don't know what the deal is. But uh, I told him uh, I wrote back and I said my. Irritable bowel syndrome doesn't sound like a big problem any longer. <laughs> yeah. so, You've got a lot of things that don't count very much yet. What? You have a lot of things that are not that important. Uh, you know, well, I mean. When it comes to your, except it's for you, they're very important. The doctors are always looking for something, though. You know, like I have to go back and find out why, why my cholesterol is 700, you know, or something like that. There's that thing. I, uh, I, I lamented that I had no, uh, had no, sheet, no, no feet, no, uh, no shoes, but then I met a man who had no feet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, exactly. I mean, it, it's funny. I was, I was even talking with the doctor the other day because of my knee, this, this knee doctor that I have inherited now because she's at my sports medicine place, and I'm getting rid of the other one. And uh, uh, she, she was asking me, like, what do you have? What don't you have? You know, what have, you, what have you been your ailments and so on? And I couldn't come up with very many. You know, I said, I don't even think I came up with the IBS because I didn't think that was germane to the discussion. Um, uh, and, um, but I, you know, I told her um, what the, my cholesterol was a little high. I think, I think actually it was the lab that did a bad test because you can't be on these cholesterol lowering drugs and have cholesterol that high, you know. Huh? Nothing. No, you can't. <laughs> You really can't. You, you could be on one that works for you and then one that might not work for you. Well, it could, it could be, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, it was working It doesn't for work before. that well. <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? So you're a little lower than you would be without it, but you're still way, way too high. And I've also been reading stuff about cholesterol and that, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't. I will see you on the other side. Oh, okay. Yeah, Brian's going to call us from home. Uh, uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know that. Uh, uh, that the, they're saying some people are saying are starting to say that using oops, I lost everybody here. Let me get no, everybody I'm back. Just Brian, huh? Easy. No, I and I didn't lose anybody. I just got you all cattywampus on the screen. Oh, uh, because I was trying to get rid of Brian by going remove person. Well, it already went away. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> But you know the the cholesterol uh, may not be the best answer in in deciding how the, the potential of cholesterol being necessarily a bad thing. Some people can have high cholesterol, and because their system is such, it, it doesn't really affect them. You know, and other people it does. You know, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go back and have the test in about another month, 
and we'll see, uh, you know. But I also, these labs, I don't believe these labs. I mean, they are always coming back with false positives on everything. And I know people have been terrorized by these things. So hmm. I made a decision. I'm not going to a doctor ever again. <laughs> oh, no. Well, here's my thinking on it. You know, and, and Albert, my, my old producer and friend, Albert, said it to me once. He said, if it doesn't bleed and um, it doesn't hurt, then don't worry about it, you know. <laughs> uh, and my feeling is every year I go and I get a test from the doctors. And there's always something in there I've got to go back and get retested for. And I'm sick and tired of being terrorized by medicine. Oh, it's, it's, you know, and, and eventually I'm going to drop dead anyway. And, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm in great pain or something's really bothering me, then I'll go to a doctor. The knee is bothering me. I go to a doctor. The doctor can give me a shot, make me feel better. I go to the doctor. But if the doctor is just simply going to terrorize me every time I go to him, you know. I just thought of a good. So you're not you know this is from before somebody who's had quarter a lot of cortisone shots anybody here there used to be a rule Teenager. where you could only have a few cortisone shots mm -hmm. but you know alex if you're that age you could cortisone shot yourself up and you'd be like a spry 60 year old <laughs> well you know the the only thing i you know the only thing that's ever gone really bad in that part of my body in my legs is this is this meniscus tear and um, and I'm using this this uh, Voltaren or whatever it's called, and it seems to be, I woke up this morning feeling pretty good actually, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it does work to a certain extent. And I felt lousy later on in the day, but yeah, what the hell? <laughs> anyway, is that, is that rule still stand where you're not allowed to have so many cortisone shots? I've never heard that, and I don't know yeah. because I've never had yeah. that many cortisone shots. I've had one Depends cortisone on shot in my life. It was into my hand. Let me turn on the uh, camera so people can see. Right here, right, right, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't get it. You're spinning. And 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 that was painful. I'm telling you, it was one of the most mm. painful shots I ever got. And he said, yeah, that one's pretty painful. And then I asked the, the woman, the doctor, who's going to give me a shot in my knee, well, will that hurt because I had it here? Will it hurt? She, won't, she said it won't hurt the same as it did mm. in your, uh, because he was going deep into, into muscle and stuff like that. All I know is that uh, she's probably going to do it just so I can feel a little more comfortable, you know. Yeah. But, geez, it's, you know. I've never had anything like this in my life. Girlfriends had it constantly. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I had cortisone when I was a teenager. Yeah. And they, they gave me, uh, like, daily injections. Really? And, oh, yeah. And I don't think they do this protocol anymore. Cool. But I got so, f I want to say fat, but my, my skin and everything was exploding. Ooh. Okay, and my face was like all puffed up. And uh, do you remember Jerry Lewis a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the same kind oh, yeah. of thing. That was from he had I forget what what sickness he had, but they were giving him steroids. maybe some uh, steroids. Steroids, which and is his cortisol, face is he, he, it just blew up. I right. mean, he looked like you know some a I balloon. Know, he looked like a balloon, yeah. and everybody was making fun out of Jerry Lewis. Look what he. And finally, he just said, fuck it. I'm going to stop taking this stuff. Uh, I don't care if it does make me feel slightly better. And he stopped taking it, and his face went back to normal. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, you saw the Jerry Lewis you always knew and hated. So, you know. <laughs> I don't think that's one of the best drugs in the world and, uh, yeah. to take. And, and I've heard that other people who take it permanently... Wow, to uh, have difficulties in survival ship. How about that? Yeah, well, you know what I, what I read about this Voltaren is it can give you a heart attack. Mm. <laughs> I don't oh. know why. I just spread it on my knee. That's it, you know. <laughs> but apparently, if you mix it with like too much aspirin or something, it can be dangerous. So yeah, I know if you no. put it down on your on your knee there, you get pneumonia. I think. Pneumonia? Yeah. Did you just say oh! that, Jeff? Did you just say that? 
I did. <laughs> Do we credit you with that with that joke? What's I guess you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. <laughs> but be that as it may, uh, let's get back to the the substance of things. The other pro the thing that this uh, special prosecutor is going to do is he's going to get into the connection between Trump and his associates and Trump himself in Russia fixing the elections. That's one thing. But he's also part of his job is to go after the whole Comey affair. And I think that one is going to turn out to be far more fruitful yes. than the Russian thing. Now, Putin and came out today. what he told the Russians. Well, Putin came out today and said that he talked to the Russians. And uh, they, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 Putin came out and said he, uh, he talked to his people and stuff. And he said he has transcripts of what went <laughs> on. Right. <laughs> Now imagine Putin, Putin is as bad as Trump, but smarter. <laughs> oh yeah, That's right. undoubtedly. No, absolutely. I yeah. yeah, and the part of problem is, is Putin has world domination aspirations. Uh -huh. Trump, Trump's really happy being a little rich fish instead of it. But Putin really wants to conquer no, the planet. There's more. To, there's more to it than that, Renee. Uh, there's more. Huh? The whole there, no, there's but, more to wait. it than that. The other thing there's that adds to it is that what he wants to do is to, to destabilize us. Mm -hmm. So by making comments like this or entering into the whole fray, he helps to destabilize the United States. Absolutely. He's gonna admit he doesn't have a whole hell of a lot to do in terms of destabilizing us any further than we have been over the last 40 years. Well, but it, it, in this particular case, look at what... Uh, the current reaction is to all these allegations about Trump and the whole thing that's going on. The stock market today took a massive dump. Yeah, yeah. I heard Much that. like Donald <laughs> Trump after one of his McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a massive dump. And uh, 300 and, what is it, 335, something like that? Large amount. Uh, huh? I want to... What would you say? Uh, I, I think I, I thought they said about two percent. It's whatever that uh, well, is. Well, it, yeah, it was uh, down three hundred and seventy-two points. Yep. I don't know why they call it points when in reality it's kind of dollars, isn't it? No, Not really. It's points. Huh? It's an average. Percentage. It's an average. But anyway, so I mean, that's that's a big drop for one day. Yep. Well, what'll be interesting is to see if you had the time to watch the first part of every news broadcast so abc nbc cbs cnn fox and see who talks about it and in what context they talk about it because yeah. yeah. i had heard it on i was driving all day most of the day today and i had heard it on um on a cnn station and i got on my alerts but I, for some reason i got on iheart radio and they said something stupid like yeah, due to the problems with the stock market, you know, we're going to shy away from this story or something like that. And I'm like, okay, you know what? You didn't it used even to be Clear that. Channel. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, did they? Yeah. They yeah. Almost yeah. 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 El Rushbo, douchebag, pimple neck, cocksucker, Limbaugh. <laughs> well, actually, <There's> actually, <laughs> actually, the, the he's with uh, he's with Premier Networks. Uh, Brian. Ah. Yeah, he, it was he, just He wasn't with Clear tits. Channel, but Clear Channel, I believe, Rob, didn't they own... Premier? I was just going to say that Premier Networks is owned by Clear Channel or yeah. iHeart. But basically, he didn't work for iHeart or for... Uh, he worked for, right, a, a subsidy, a yeah. subsidiary. Of, yeah. So I just wanted to correct that because I'm a radio guy and I had couldn't let it go. Are they a Christian station or something? No. Cookie no. Cookie. No, that's... Cookie that's cookie. It's owned by uh, the... the the Mays, Lowry Mays, uh, I don't even know that they own it anymore, actually. But when I worked for them in Mays, the early I think, 2000s, sold a large chunk of it out, you know. But, it's, yeah, it's public now, that's true. No, the, 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 the Christian one is Salem Broadcasting, which I always found was kind of interesting. Oh, huh? Yeah, how appropriate. I, I yeah, I, I was. I, well. I, I always wondered why. A, I mean, they also have talk stations, so but they're ba they're Christian based in their philosophy. Uh, but they also have just regular, like you know, guy comes in, puts down the money, and goes and does some evangelizing. Okay, 
and it's called Salem Broadcasting. And I just wondered why you're going to have a religious outfit that names itself after a place that burned witches at the stake. <laughs> I mean, I, I never saw the 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 uh, convergence of those two things. So, uh, well, you know, I think it's a, a Trump. If you flipped it around and looked at it, look at it like Trump would look at it. Mm -hmm. Technically, they removed a whole bunch of witches from from the world, so they're winning. Winning. <laughs> winning. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so anyway, I um. I, I just think that there's a, a lot here. What's the funny fucker logic that that is. Yeah. I, I I would like to know what the odds are that he, he that he will get impeached or in well an impeachment in, 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 in impeachment is an indictment. Um, it's you know it doesn't mean they're getting kicked out of office. It could take, take a couple of years. Uh, You'll have to change the house. There how something. fast was it with uh, with uh, Clinton? Oh, it was a good while, 1998. I, I, I seem to remember time. myself saying that, well, I seem to remember saying something like, for two years, our, our nation's been put on hold. Right. Uh, I think maybe it took two years. I think it was something like that. Brian's always eating when he comes on here. What are you having tonight, Brian? And can you Let's share it with the work. rest of Let us? Let him alone. Just, he just came home from work. Yeah, but what? Uh, it, turkey what, casserole. Turkey that. casserole. That sounds very tasty. It is. And, uh, you know what we should do? One night we should see what you're going to have for dinner. And then all of us will go out and buy the same thing. Let's start your and, own betting pool there. And have it at the same time. Yes, Renee? I would like to know if anybody would be in. And if is it legal first? And then would anybody be interested in starting a, a prediction game? Or do you just say it's gambling and take bets on when when you think he's going to be kicked out of office or when you think he's going to be impeached? Anybody interested between the Gab three shows? A gabnet pool. Yep, a gabnet pool. You know something? Gabnet Deadpool. I think that's a hard <laughs> one. That's a hard one to 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 figure out because there are two ways of looking at this. It could be sooner than you expect. You know, well, he he could wind up. The problem he, is. They say the problem with that is the fact they gave him such latitude. They said that to look into the uh, the the Russian ties with with the campaign and other things or some like phrase like that. In other words, he could take this anywhere he wants, and it could take us a long time because of that. Well, you remember the special prosecutor in the Clinton situation, Kenneth Starr. The Kenneth Starr. Mm -hmm. He took it beyond where he was going. He, it, just because he was supposed to look into, I can't remember. Uh, Whitewater, originally. Into Whitewater, I think. Oh, yeah. They went he, all then that. when Whitewater didn't pan out, he went fishing for anything he could find until he finally just trapped Bill Clinton into, you know, the Monica Lewinsky question, which took him completely by surprise. He, you know, the fact is that with depositions, you don't have to say what you're going to ask you can ask anything you want to you can go in any direction you want to i was listening to nature of the beast cnn yeah. tonight and alan dershowitz was on and he said something disturbing and he said the american people may never hear a word of this because now that they're doing this with this special prosecutor and, and doing this all – this is all behind closed doors. And it could be that we never learn anything other than, yes, we're going to bring charges or no, we're not going to bring charges. Why? Because, because this guy is – his job is to look for facts. He's not there to – he's not there to do anything besides – either bring charges or not bring charges these are not public hearings everything is private behind closed doors now in the case never learn anything in the case the of comey all over that shit in, in the case you know, of comey yeah, he's, i can kind of understand it he said that he's ready and willing to testify uh, at a moment's notice uh, well, and, but, and bring the goods with him, open. but he doesn't he it want open. it as a he doesn't want it as a closed hearing. He will yeah. not yeah. he will not show up for a closed hearing. He but wants America to hear stop. this. His buddy Mueller might stop him. What was that? <laughs> Who was me? Somebody's reminder. It, well, it's not mine. Who knows? Not mine. <laughs> uh, oh, it's the dinner What's bell, uh, uh, Brian. Time for your second <laughs> course. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, my cell phone's microwave. 
it, it you know I mean it it uh, um, uh, I, I think it would, it wasn't Kenneth Starr able to create a situation where they indicted you know, the president or they impeached the president? I mean, well, didn't he did it all? Yeah, he, was, he also he had did. a Republican Congress. Uh, did he? Yeah, I guess he did. Yeah, yeah. Newt Gingrich. Yeah, yes, a hypocrite yes. who. Uh, Spearhead, well, one of the spearheaders of uh, you know the whole impeachment thing. My Meanwhile, he's favorites, you know my cheated on, yeah. you know had two two wives before and on a third wife or some <laughs> my, was my cheating on her with uh, some yeah. some some bitch well, while well, the uh, third uh, wife was in the hospital on her deathbed or something on her right? deathbed. Yeah, well, she didn't die by the way. She didn't mm -hmm. die. She's still alive. I hope she's she still but, 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 but he was legal. in the she was in the hospital with cancer, uh, in, in not too well condition. And uh, Newt went to the hospital room and served her with the divorce papers. Yeah, right. What a douche. Uh, absolute douchebag. Yep. Something I did not call him when I interviewed him. <laughs> but I got him. So, uh, you know, I got him. I put him in a corner he couldn't get out of. Uh, but he he's just, you know. There are some people who you find is, uh, you know, kind of, you know they're supposed to be like douchebags, and then you meet them, and they're they're not really douchebags, you know. Mm. Uh, what's his name? The guy in Texas, uh, Scott. Um, who was the guy? Delay. Uh, De Tom Tom yes. Delay. I interviewed him, found him absolutely charming, and I didn't find him to lie. He, I found that every question I asked, he gave me a direct answer, you know. They call and, him the hammer. And I'll tell you another guy I liked. You had the wrong guy. <laughs> I had the wrong guy. I'll tell you another guy I liked who who was just, it was just terrific as a guest, and I liked him, and he was fun and everything. Mike Huckabee. Now, I yes. know you find that hard to believe because his politics are just third rail, right? But but as a person to interview and a person. Very nice person. Very charming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you know that, Jeff? Have you been in here? I don't know. Presence? Just I saw him many times being interviewed. Yeah. Really, and nice I, I always got that. He has a beautiful demeanor. So I liked him, okay? And a lot of times I would have politicians on who I would totally disagree with. But in person, on a one-to-one -one interview basis, they were really nice to deal with. And when, when the mics went off and it was during a commercial break, you talk with them and they're really nice, you know. But Newt Gingrich, fucking asshole, <laughs> you know, walks in with a fucking attitude. And uh, the first time I interviewed him, I let him along uh, because I wanted to be really kind of, I wanted to get him to come back. So I didn't get really in his face. The second time he came back, I said, now I'm going to get in his face. And I hit him with a question he couldn't answer. Hmm. I said, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. I said, do you believe in, in your Lord Jesus Christ? He says, yeah. I said, then how come you're on all those Sunday news programs? And and he, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, it's the Lord's day. You're not supposed to work on that day. And yet you're on all those shows all the time. Well, I go to church first. I said, but that's not the point. You're not supposed to work at all, Newt. And he hemmed and hawed and couldn't come up with a fucking answer. Probably gave you a, a surprised face, too, like this, or as I call it, the cum face. Well, the, no, it, it, I can't imagine what his O face looks like. Okay, that would be, I just, Rob just had a, a grimace on his face when I mentioned his, uh, Newt Gingrich's O face. Uh, cut it out. I just swallowed a boatload of bitter cum, courtesy of Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck you. Yes, Jeff. I remember that uh, when uh, Nixon was uh, in all kinds of trouble, they had a special guy. His name was Ox or Cox? Yeah, Archibald, uh, Archibald Cox. Cox. Yeah. yeah, and what was his position there? I think, I think he was a special prosecutor. He was a special and, prosecutor and didn't too. Nixon fire him? Right. That For no reason. Well, the attorney general tried, had to fire him. Nixon right. couldn't do it. Two but, guys quit. But he had to go down to, to several attorney generals. Yeah. Two guys quit. Yeah. Uh, John, you have your hand right. up? No, no. I was just, I was just doing the levels. They, they had to, he had to keep going down to a right, right, lesser right, and down, lesser yeah. important person to finally have someone who will say, "Okay, I'll fire Cox for you." Yeah. 
And there were jokes about that at the I time. I believe it was course, uh, Robert Bork who fired him. Bork. Yes. Really? The man Bors. himself, yeah. The man whose name he sounds like a Supreme Court candidate. Bort's name always got to me because it always sounded like a, what a fart it sound a fart makes in the bathtub. <laughs> right. Yeah, you tell Just him. like Scalia always sounded like a venereal disease. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. I have, a, I have to tell you, sir, you have Scalia. Oh, my God. Holy fuck. You know fuck. something? I've got to, I, 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 I got to it say. It really burns. I'm, I'm going to defend. <laughs> it does. I'm going to defend Scalia for a second here, though. Oh, dear. You, you know, no, I mean, look, yeah. he wasn't in our, in our wheelhouse, okay? <laughs> He's not the kind of politics we agree with. But I don't think he was a dishonorable man. Oh wait, uh, wait a minute. And I think he, I think he was, I think he was pretty honest. And and he just had his opinion of how the world works and how the Constitution yeah. reads. He, unlike Phil, did have some consistency, as I vaguely recall. Yes, yes. yes. So whether you liked him or not for his politics. The fact that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was his best friend has to say right. something about the man. Wasn't he the gentleman who did something that's really never been done in our history before when he piped up during the during President Obama's speech uh, uh, address to the nation? Wasn't no, he? he the wasn't, no, no, he didn't. Pop Not up. Scalia. No, no, that wasn't Scalia. That was Are a, you the ULI guy or a, that, that was a that so was that a congressman. Was a congressman. Uh, no, okay. it wasn't Joe Wilson. Wilson. There yeah. wasn't. It, it, It'll be a while. You lie, because I'm from the <laughs> South, and I can yell that way to niggers, because I don't like them. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. I'll have to look it up. Billy was... Bob broke back butt fucker that he was. Yeah. Uh, you know, is. I mean, it, 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 you, you have to, uh, Scalia was an honor, honorable jurist, but his, poly, you know, Unlike Clarence the, what Thomas. The, what they say is is that the job of the Supreme Court is only to do one thing, and that's to interpret the Constitution. Everything goes back to the Constitution. Is this constitutional? Okay. And, you know, I got to tell you, the Constitution is like the I Ching. You know, it's whatever you want to read into it so that you get nine jurists who all look yeah. at a single subject, and then they look at the... Uh, uh, at, at the uh, uh, Constitution, and everybody has a different idea of what the Constitution means. It's, it's like funny the because the uh, Second Amendment, well-regulated militia. Right. I read uh, yeah. into it one way, and I guarantee if Phil read it, reads into it, someone like Phil or a few friends that I know read it into it as something entirely different. Well, in the but, 30s, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court looked at the mm -hmm. Second Amendment and said that it was a cumulative right, not an individual right, because it says in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, the citizen should be allowed to bear arms. But it was a cumul it was a it was a gr mass the kind of thing where it had to be a group of people. It was not a individual right, and and that's the way it stood for many many years until you got another Supreme Court that looked at it and said something else completely. I don't understand how it could be unconstitutional if it says well-regulated, the well-regulated part, and well, doing, it, having yeah. this country do similar to what uh, Australia has done, which is dole out licenses and make people who own guns as uh, responsible as those who own cars here. And, you know, it's funny that, that the people who helped pass that thing in, <laughs> in Australia were, were people who were very pro gun for the most part, but they had had that, that major event that took place that just completely made everybody gasp and go, come on, we don't need to have guns around here. And um, What was that major event? Uh, it, was a, it, it was a candy store. It was a lint, the lint, lint candy store or something where they went in and they shot the place up, and it was just a horrific massacre. And people and, died. And, and finally they just said, that's it. we got to have some laws about guns. You know. And I didn't. I don't even know if it was the magnitude of Sandy Hook. I think it was. I think it was something like in the, I don't know, upper teens. So, the, but they just took it as, you know what? This is not how adults live. We're gonna. Everybody's gonna get them banned across the board, and everybody agreed. They all. They turned them in. It wasn't as big deal. I. I, I think certain people are allowed to have them in in Australia, uh, based upon the fact that there are certain parts of that country which are way off the beaten track and you need them to be able to shoot critters you know uh but oh, they got some wild ass 
the animal life over yeah. but but the country took to it very well they were so <laughs> disgusted by what happened what would it you know if a sandy hook won't do it for us in this country oh. then nothing's going to do it. oh you know according to alex john sandy hook never happened oh really oh yeah yeah, he's that yeah. far off. Well, uh, you can add this to it. According to Alex Bennett, Alex Jones never happened. So, <laughs> well, some people actually say there's a popular conspiracy theory that Alex Jones is uh, Alex Jones is really uh, Bill Hicks in disguise. Oh, I see. no, no, <laughs> don't say that, that about Bill. It's uh, funny. Don't say that. I just thought it was amusing. Yeah, yeah but. Uh, and it's Andy uh, Kaufman, of course, coming back from the dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or that. It's his yeah. new version of Tony Clifton. I mean, you've, you've heard it, how Jones talks, man. I've never heard anybody with such raspy, totally, you know, can, his voice. I'm surprised he still has, has well, I think tonsils that, I left. Think it's part, I, mean, like, I think that's like part so, of the reason people... So shouting. No, that, I think that's part of the reason why people listen to him, because the voice is so in your face mm. that... You can't. You can't Limbaugh avoid. Limbaugh's like that too. You, you can't avoid. Well, to Lim, oh boy. Limbaugh's a little more radio, you know. Well, yeah, he comes from that. Yeah, and mm. and you know, in my own way, I have a lot of respect for Limbaugh as a broadcaster. You know, um, I, I I think that I often liken Rush Limbaugh to Ch step and fetch it. Now, hold on a second, and I'll explain <laughs> no, no. why. I know there's somewhere you're going here. <laughs> When, Step and Fetch It, in case people listening don't know who I'm talking about, was a black comedian who played a very kind of slow black guy. I'm going as fast as I can. And everybody said he created the stereotype of the black man in America. And my answer to them was, no, he didn't. He was a comedian. He created a character much like Lucille Ball created a character and a lot of other people create characters that they play. Jerry Lewis played a, a character. And it was so popular that other black comedians started doing the same thing. They created the stereotype, not step and fetch it. Well, the same is true of Rush Limbaugh. He didn't create that in-your-face conservative talk show host. He was the first guy to do it. And and to do it effectively, and then everybody else came along and tried to be the junior Rush Limbaugh, and that's why we had a whole country full of these people. But I don't blame Rush for that. You know, Rush saw an opportunity when they did away with the fairness doctrine to be able to just do a show with a certain <clears throat> kind of politics without having to have equal time given to other people. Okay, and he just took advantage of that. And he was the first guy to take advantage of it, and he was very successful at it. And I got to tell you, every time I ever listened to Rush, maybe not in recent years, because he's getting long in the tooth, but when I go back to the old, you know, uh, to Rush Limbaugh and and check him out, uh, some of the I listen to him and go, this guy is a great broadcaster. Would you disagree, Rob? You're a broadcaster. Yeah, I, yeah, he's compelling and he's a good communicator, but I, I, it, it, it pains me to give him a compliment. <laughs> he's a little more serious about himself than he used to be. He used to be very self-pejorative about himself, you know. As I talk to you with my nicotine-stained fingers, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know, and everything was kind of tongue-in-cheek. And I, I just when I heard him, I said, you know, I don't agree with the guy's politics, but boy, he's good at what he does. You know. I give credit where credit is due. Yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Alex, yeah. how would you compare him to uh, Bob Grant? Bob was a different animal. Okay, Bob Grant, most people don't know Bob Grant because he was just here in New York, basically. And he was very conservative and so on. But Bob and I worked together at WMCA in New York. And, and, and we used to have fun because his show went on, I think, uh, before mine. And as we did the crossover, he and I would argue back and forth, and that was fun, you know. But Bob and I, in spite of the fact that we called each other names and we had you know, fights with each other, off the air we thought the world of each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's because Bob wasn't that way off the air. He didn't take it home with him. A guy like Hannity takes it home with him. Bob never really? took it home with him. I mean, as far as the dynamic between Hannity and Combs, whenever Combs was his co-host, did they? Hannity was they, was that way. Hannity is a gold-plated prick. 
okay? In fact, one time, Combs had me on the radio show with uh, 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 Hannity, and we were both on the phones <coughs> together. And uh, uh, we started arguing, and it just, and finally, during, uh, after it was over with, he said to him, I was told this by Combs, I never want to be on the same radio with that guy ever again. <laughs> Huh. And, uh, and I just said, does he take himself that seriously? He says, yes, he does. You know, Limbaugh never took himself seriously. And handed to Limbaugh, ta- the biggest talk show host in America, and he never, ever thought about running for political office. You, you can't take yourself seriously if you're going to say, with talent on loan <clears throat> from God. Exactly. <laughs> Excellence exactly. in broadcasting. So, I mean, uh, and the trouble with all these other guys is most of them really believe what they're saying. On the other hand, Bob Grant, uh, Bob did what he did for effect. And off the air, he and I got along great, and I love the guy. And the last time I saw him was about uh, maybe 10 years ago, (laughs) 10 to 13 years ago when I first came back to New York. And I was asked to go on WOR and do some fill-ins and when i came over to just do a promo uh a a good friend of mine who was the program director said hey i got somebody i want you to meet he wants to see you and it was Mm -hmm. bob and we hadn't seen each other in years Mm -hmm. and he was so happy to see me and he was so nice and uh, bob grant was uh, do you you believe what i'm telling you jeff or did you think absolutely yeah yeah but he's more grisly on the radio than that well he's not grisly anymore he's dead well, but, but you know, <laughs> get off my air, you. Remember, he used to say that yes. all the time when he. Get well, off well, the, get the, off the, of the, my the, air, the, you. The progenitor to all of that was a guy in California by the name of Joe Pine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I used to know Joe Pine because my wife, at the time, worked for Joe Pine. Did like some production assistant or whatever, and he was the biggest talk show host going. But I, to this day, I can't tell you what his politics were. He was just nasty to everybody. You know, get off the phone, you creep. Boom, hangs up the phone, you know. And yet, Joe Pine personally was a, just a sweetheart. <laughs> the nicest guy in the world. And I remember walking down the street one day with Joe. And an old lady comes over and she's poor and she's got her hand out like she's looking for money. And Joe throws a $10 bill in her hand. And he said, look back, the rest of us, if any of you tell anybody that I just did that, (laughs) he said, you're out. (laughs) He said, because it'll ruin my career. You know. So, I mean, it's the difference between doing a show and believing that you are that character. And I don't think to this day Limbaugh really believes that character, you know. I think in his private life, he still probably has, you know, I don't even know if he's a right winger, to tell you the goddamn truth, <clears throat> you know. But the, there is there is something that's wrong with it. There, uh, I, there was a time when I was, uh, I was looking for an agent, and I found the same agent as, uh, what's his name, the guy who has his own network. Uh, uh, Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. And uh, I talked with him. And uh, he was thinking of taking me on. And then his big question was, hey, Alex, uh, um, where do your politics lie? And I said, uh, well, I'm a big lefty. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm a big lefty, but I got a sense of humor about it, and I'm a big lefty. And he said, well, he said, do you think you could go right wing? And I said, no, I don't think I could. He said, well, thanks for dropping by. <laughs> that was it. If I couldn't be a right winger, you know, and and I can't be a right winger because I couldn't go to sleep at night. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I couldn't, I couldn't phony it up like a lot of these right wing talk show hosts do, you know. Hey, Tom Yamaguchi just joined us uh, in the last few minutes of our program. Hello, Tomas. Hi, I thought I'd chime in about Joe Pine. Yeah, by the way, yeah, we don't have a picture on you, but don't worry about it. Okay, because I just turned on my camera. So yeah, well, maybe. And uh, I think our connection's weak, so maybe yeah. it's just as good. I'm just in the last few minutes. Yeah, but anyway. But 
but you were asking about Joe Pine's politics, and he, on the air, was very conservative. But he was also an individual, and I remember one issue that you and I and he all agreed on, and that was the death penalty. Yeah. He was opposed. He was opposed to the death penalty. He believed in uh, <laughs> life imprisonment without parole. No opportunity to get him, but he, he absolutely opposed the, um, the death penalty. You know, you know what, though? If you went and asked Rush Limbaugh, who were you influenced by? And I've never heard anybody ever ask him that question. I'll bet mm -hmm. the first name that comes up is Joe Pine. I would, I would say probably true. Because, because Rush was on the West Coast. That's where Pine, you know, was Pine's Rule. bailiwick. <laughs> and, and I think a lot, a lot of these, uh, he, he pretty much based what he was doing on, on Pine. Although he modified it, he took away some of the get off my phone, you creep kind of thing and replaced it with uh, uh, diatribes. But nevertheless, I, I, I say he was probably, uh, you know, uh, affected by him. There were several other talk show hosts that people forget back in those days, but they weren't as much in your face. But one of them was Les Crane. Mm, that's the guy I was trying to remember. Yeah, the name of. who always yeah, the, in his the, 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 mic, the, the gun microphone. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. did. They, he had a TV show for a time, and uh, it, it was really in your face most of it. You know, he would have Madeline Murray O'Hare on, and then they would just go to town on each other. Uh, and uh, he was uh, he was funny about Les Crane. He always named himself after birds. He kept using different show business business names over his career. And the one that I remember just before he was Les Crane, he was Johnny Raven when he was a disc jockey. <laughs> um, but there you go. and and then the one p person that we're all forgetting in those early days was Mike uh, uh, Wallace. Mm hmm. Mike Wallace had a show called Night Beat. This, this almost drove him out of the industry in which he was an in-your-face talk show host. Wow. And he, would be, he could be interviewing the Pope, and he'd go, yeah, I know you, you're there, and you're in the Vatican, and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're a spiritual leader of, of billions of people. But when was it you first became a communist? <laughs> you know, that was his style of doing interviews. He was, in, it was always that way, and he was so vilified by the rest of the industry that he pretty well was shut out and he had to go do biography to make a living okay yeah. and then that kind of made him get a little respect so then the cbs figured they'd hire him to do some stuff and eventually he worked his way back to into a very respectable position but early on he was just one of those in your face interviewers yeah. and and, well, and i can't ended up on uh, 60 minutes well, yeah, he wound up on sixty minutes. He was, in fact, he was the one of the. He was the first host of sixty minutes with uh, what's his name, uh, Harry Reasoner. Or least safer. Mm -hmm. Was it no? It was Harry Reasoner. Oh, Harry Reasoner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, it really, you know, these are the guys who are the progenitors to to Limbaugh and to to all the the talk show hosts we hear today. But then again, uh, Wallace never had any politics. Crane never had any politics, as I remember. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there were any other people like that. But Limbaugh, uh, Downey? Barry Barry Downey. Farber uh, is definitely Barry Farber is uh, definitely right wing. Morton Downey, another guy oh, I like. Yeah. Another guy I liked. I got along great with Mort, uh, and, and I and I liked him, uh, even though his show was a disaster. But it did bring <laughs> us the one moment when Al Sharpton got decked. <laughs> by uh, who was it from the NAACP uh, 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 who was on the show and he just he decked it literally decked him if he, he, Ray go on Ennis, go, go Ray, hmm? Ray Ennis is Ray, it? Roy Ennis, Roy Ennis. Roy Ennis. Roy Ennis. if you get a chance folks go on to I'm sure it's there on YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Al Sharpton is. gets decked by Roy Ennis mm. and you will see uh, this big fat slob get decked uh, it, was, it, it was something to see. And there's a good movie about uh, Morton Downey Jr. too, but I can't remember what the name of it is. It's some, uh, mm -hmm. But it, 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 he, was, he was an interesting sort too. But I liked him. He was a nice guy. He didn't, he didn't buy the thing either, you know. 
and um, but he he went a little crazy and a little nuts and didn't handle fame all that well. If you remember, he he wound up coming out of a bathroom at the San Francisco airport saying he had been attacked by some Nazis and he had a lipstick <laughs> mark of a, a Nazi swastika on his head, only it was exactly. in reverse like he did it in the mirror. <laughs> you know, and, and there he lost his credibility. Not as much as Dan Rather did with What's the Frequency, Kenneth, but that's another story yeah. altogether. Oh, yeah. Rob Alfano, thank you. Thank you and your, thank your you. ball sack. Uh, Ro John Rockwell, thank you. Uh, mm. And uh, Kevin, always good to have you here. Scott, love it when you blare out something because you're so mad at it. Uh, Jeff Stein, you look tan and healthy today. Boy, is that color in your face. I hope it doesn't hurt. Uh, Renee Collins, thank you. She came, manages to keep the sunblock on even in Hawaii. What was that? <laughs> Brian, thank you. Brian Ludwig and Tommy Amaguchi, great that you joined us at the last minute. Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. Anyway, thank you all for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. And thank we'll you. see you again uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Bye-bye, everybody. And that's it. Let me get rid of all these folks uh, for the time being so that I can uh, get all this set up so that the next show can use the Skype lines. Meanwhile, I want you uh, to uh, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next over most of the same station. Followed at the 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with Connections, a nice show about uh, about dating and other things it's a nice way of putting it anyway i'll see you again tomorrow night same time same station in life and if you see her yep tell her i love her okay